What's up, what's up? No, I'm just joking. But you may be unknowingly sabotaging your own spiritual journey. You may be blocking your third eye from opening and you don't even know it. And I say this because I didn't know it, that there's actually some deadly words that emit low frequency energy and it shuts down the higher functions of your brain in your pineal gland. Now, before we dive into this video though, I just wanna say thank you. Welcome, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. Thanks for stumbling on the video. And if you're a returner, thanks for coming back. Be sure you hit the bell notification right over there to get notified for new episodes. At this point, we've all heard of the pineal gland, right? The pineal gland, it's also known as your third eye. It's located in the central part of the brain between the two hemispheres. Its location is deep within the brain's core and it emphasizes a significance on the roles of human consciousness and perception. And since it controls human consciousness and perception, when you think or say certain words, you can unknowingly shut down the higher functions of your pineal gland and that closes your third eye. And you might be like, okay, whatever. But this can be very dangerous because the pineal gland's role with your mystical experiences due to its production of dimethyltryptamine, DMT, powerful hallucinogenic compound, that is believed to create spiritual experiences. People have them during near death experiences. They can help you with telepathy, psychic powers, intuition, superhuman levels of spiritual awareness to move through reality at a higher consciousness that can help you attract and create things that you want quicker and easier. And all of that being so, before we dive into these three dangerous words, Let's just quickly explore the connection between language, consciousness, and the brain and the pineal gland. Now, every word that you utter emits a unique frequency that affects your body, your brain, your nervous system. And negative words can even damage vital structural responses in your brain for memory, for feelings. And in the endocrine regulations publication, it showed that dwelling on negative words and thoughts can literally physically harm your brain and affect your endocrine system. Your endocrine system controls your pineal gland. And as we all know, our brain perceives negativity as real dangers. We get a stress response that impacts our overall well being. But when we unlock the deeper negative energy behind these three words, we free our brain and we can open our pineal gland. And now it's time for the words. What if I never? What if I never meet my soulmate? What if I never get the money? What if I never? This word triggers anxiety and fear and a state of disempowerment. It creates an instant negative response in your body. But, but, just imagine the possibilities when you shift out of this. Instead of unconsciously dwelling in, what if I never, what if instead you said, won't it feel amazing? Won't it feel amazing? Won't it feel amazing when the money comes? Won't it feel amazing when I get that huge client? Won't it feel amazing when I stop believing that there's no good guys, that there's no right women left, wouldn't it be amazing? What's the best that could happen? And here's the exciting thing about that. When you dwell in this energy, you are priming your brain to not trigger stress response. This allows your endocrine system to operate and it allows your pineal gland to be in a receptive state to higher universal energy that it otherwise cannot perceive due to the stress response. And now, word number two. Did you know that science has now proven that saying I can't triggers a stress response that's similar to the neural activity of saying no? The second that happens, the amygdala, the fear part of your brain, it goes into overdrive. It immediately starts releasing all these stress hormones and this stress response 
actually shuts down your brain and it stops you from connecting with your higher self. But here's the thing. Abraham Hicks has something called the emotional guidance system where you know based off of how you feel, whether you're in stress response or not, and you can instantly shift out of this. So you replace I can't with I can't. You replace I can't, which instantly is triggering a response of the worst that could happen, right? That's what's happening. That's the primal stress response in the body, the survival instinct. I can't means something bad's going to happen. I mean, I can't ask them out because maybe I'll get embarrassed. I can't start my own business because maybe I'll go bankrupt. I can't do this because of this. It is the worst that could happen. So you say, I can, and you ask yourself one question. What's the best that could happen? Literally, what's the best that could happen? That question changed my life. I was a freshman in college listening to my economics teacher rattle on from a textbook. I really wanted to go vagabond backpack around the world, and I wanted to start writing books and be this big successful author. That's what I wanted. But I said, I can't because worst case scenario well, this won't work out and then I'll be a failure and I dropped out of college and then my whole life's over. But what's the best that could happen? And I asked myself that. Well, the best that could happen is maybe it works. Maybe something good happens. Maybe it ends up becoming a huge hit and then I become this big successful author. Maybe it's true. What's the best that could happen? What's the best that could happen for you? And a lot of times people say, I understand, but it's so how do you stay in it? because it's so hard when the old subconscious snaps back. And one of the things that I did when I wrote my first book that changed my life is I started hypnotizing myself. I created a success hypnosis affirmations to brainwash myself so my physical senses and the world couldn't brainwash me. So that my old subconscious pattern, the worst that could happen and this won't work out and I can't and I'm not smart enough and whatever yours is, right? Just think about what yours is. What I did is I started training that part of me, that lower part of me to stop, to stop coming. And you can check out my free success hypnosis MP3s right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com. It's pinned to the comments and in the description to start to eliminate that can't response, that worst scenario response. And lastly, you have to be mindful of but. And the word but kind of seems harmless, but it holds an incredible amount of power because it can negate all the preceding awareness. Think about it like this. If you believe that your third eye opens the door to higher consciousness, science shows us that it activates DMT, right? If we understand this, then that would mean we have access to a whole bunch of energy we can't see, to new ideas to solve your problems, to new creativity. Even as I said, this opens the door to these superhuman capabilities where people have some type of telepathic type of energy or they can read energy, kind of like a psychic, or just people that are highly creative and the world doesn't control them. All of this activates from your pineal gland. And when you intellectually understand that, and then you go, but, 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 it's just you immediately shut that down in your brain. It happens instantly. So every time you catch yourself with the word but, rationalizing yourself out of your own godlike, divine, qualities and powers, these higher mental and spiritual energy. Every time your mind wants to rationalize you out of it, you just take a deep breath. And when that comes in, you just smile a little. And if you put just a little slight smile, not in like a weird way where you look like a psycho and you're like, ah, but just really slight. I learned it when I did a 14 day silent meditation in Thailand at a Buddhist monastery. They said to slightly just go like that and you'll feel your traps and what other areas of your body that naturally you hold tension you'll feel them let go that's the stress response stopping that's the nervous system letting go 
And when you're in meditation, when you're doing a guided meditation to help open your third eye, when you're practicing visualizing what you want, or you're just trying to get more peace, it happens quicker. And when that stops, that's what allows the pineal gland to open. So my friend, can't, never, but. These words are conditioned into us, but they're easy to break out of, especially using the emotional GPS system to recognize our state of being, which instantly can free us from that energy. And when you feel it arise, you just ask yourself, what's the best that could happen? What's the best that could happen? And it's probably a lot better than you think. So let me know what you think about this video. Give me a comment down below that says, what's the best that could happen? If you want another technique on how to actually open your third eye, now that you understand three of the most negative and dangerous words that shut down your brain and your pineal gland, I have a technique here on another video that got over a million views that you can check out right now by clicking this button over here. If you enjoy this video, smash the like button on it and hit that bell notification and check out my free success hypnosis, jakeshypnosis.com.